Hi, my name is Kristen Sokol. I'm an allergist immunologist at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about indoor allergens and how to avoid them. So this is part one of two videos. And in this video, we're going to focus on dust mite and pet allergen. So there has been significant advances in understanding the role of indoor allergens and how they play a role in asthma and allergic diseases in recent years. Um, so like I said, this video is going to talk about the most common indoor allergens and how we can effectively avoid them or significantly reduce those allergens. So the first most common indoor allergen is the dust mite. So dust mites are actually not in the house dust you see on the floor of your home. They're insects. They're a type of insect called an arthropod. And they're so tiny, you cannot even see them with um, your naked eye. You have to see them with a microscope. But they like to live in the home, especially in bedding, carpets, upholstered furniture, and stuffed animals. And they can cause significant symptoms and worsening of asthma and allergic disease. So how do we effectively get rid of these things, or how do we reduce them? Well, dust mites love to live in humid environments. It's almost impossible to completely eliminate dust mites, especially in dust mite prone areas, but we can reduce them. So how do we do this? It's a multi-intervention approach. So by washing bedding frequently in hot water, um, frequent vacuuming, especially of carpets and upholstered furniture, encasing mattresses and pillows with specific dust mite encasing covers, and then um, also, the use of uh, high-efficiency particulate air filters, also known as HEPA, H-E-P-A filters, can help. But really, reducing the humidity and encasing the box springs, um, mattresses, and pillows are really the most important. Oh, and also decreasing the humidity to about 35 to 50 percent in the home. So the next allergen we'll talk about is pet dander. So pets are ubiquitous, and about 50% of United States homes have a pet, dog being a little more common than cat. So dog and cat allergen actually comes from multiple um, places on the dog or cat. It comes from the saliva, the um, hair follicle, as well as the skin droppings or skin scales of the animal. And these um, allergens are all over the home when someone owns a pet, and they can travel far distances. So if someone goes to a home, another house with a pet, and then comes home, that pet allergen can stay on their clothes, so it can travel with you. So the most effective way, long-term way, to get rid of um, pet allergen is simply to remove the pet from the home. Um, and even with that intervention, it takes months for the pet allergen to go away. Um, so other things that you can do in the home if you're not willing to give up your pet or willing to get rid of your pet, um, remove the pet from areas that you're going to have intimate contact with in the home, like the bed or the couch in your bedroom, places like that. Um, you can frequently wash animals, but this hasn't shown to effectively reduce the allergen just because it requires such frequent washing and the results are so short-lived. Um, lastly, you can use have those HEPA filters we were talking about before, the high efficiency particulate air filters. But the way these work is if you really use multiple filters in multiple different rooms, um, along with the combination of frequent vacuuming. So those are the two most common indoor allergens and how to effectively reduce them in your home. And in part two of this video, I'm going to talk about pests and molds.